Hey everyone, it's Ken, Heavenly Harvest Homestead. Got another garden work walk for you, so let's roll. All right, this is our second garden walk for the season. I want to show you the progression of our our uh, vegetables, how they've been coming along. All right, so this those tomatoes I planted in the uh, garden that we, we normally put tomatoes in here. So you can see they're growing pretty well. They've come up probably three or four inches from since last week, and I planted this new one here. Um, on Monday, um, it, it was a uh, a small one that had been double planted over here on this other one. So I pulled it out and stuck it in there and it seemed to have taken over. Let me show you what we got going on over here. I got tomatoes on my tomatoes. First two here. So apparently, looking at those, those look like... Uh, the plum tomatoes that I raised last year so I could be getting some uh, paste tomatoes really early this year which would be pretty cool and this, you can see our carrots are coming up a ton the marigolds are all bloomed out looking beautiful and these tomatoes are coming up along pretty good I need to get in here and do some pruning I'll probably do that tomorrow uh, just, uh, I usually do it on a on Saturdays just to keep it on the same thing. So you got a lettuce growing here in the corner. That thing was a little tiny thing when I did the last garden walk just a week ago. So it's growing like crazy. More tomatoes, more tomatoes. And there's that the beet that keeps on coming. But the I wanted y'all to put in the comments how big you think it's gonna be. We're gonna pull it up on Mother's Day. So put it in the comments how big you think it's gonna be. And I'm going to weigh it and see who has the highest one. Who's got the closest, rather. I started noticing, I was sitting in here yesterday looking at this. I'm like, well, dang. The tomatoes are a long ways away from that. So it's going to take some extra effort to get this thing trellis, trellis properly. And this tomato right here is going to be crashing into that tomato. So I'm going to have to do some uh, strategic maneuvering here on these tomatoes. All right, here's my cantaloupe, and it's already starting to stretch out. It's got some nice blooms on it. Now they've closed up because it's uh, getting toward the evening tonight, but it's already got some blossoms on it. And I'm mildly excited about it because I've you know got you guys know I've had a hard time with cantaloupes on the homestead, so you know I'm bated breath. <laughs> All right, here's my zinnias. Or excuse me, not zinnias, my loofahs. God, loofahs. All right, so um, they're starting to get vined out, and they're not seeming to grasp onto the arbor here. So I'm gonna have to do something about that. See if I can put some small rails between the each one of these rungs, give them something to twine around with their tendrils. Let's see. Uh, <coughs> let's go this way. Here's my other box of cantaloupes in the center. Then we got our tomatoes here. These are our San Marzanos. There's my peach tree that's growing up. We're gonna probably pull that guy out. Like I said, when I get it about 12 inches tall, I'm gonna dig all that dirt out and pluck that guy out and put it into a pot. Then we've got some sunflowers coming up right here. And then I don't know what these are. All this dirt came out of our volunteer box, so if Anybody knows what these are? I don't know if there's a weed or it's a plant that is coming up. I have no idea, but they're <clears throat> everywhere we had the volunteer garden dirt put, those things are growing up. So I don't know if it's a weed or what. So let me know if you know what that is. Over here, our beans are coming up. See, they almost, it's like every seed I put in sprouted. So that's pretty awesome. You know, had had that kind of success. So these are my peas, my uh, sugar peas. On the other side over here, that's going to be, that's cantaloupe, uh, not cantaloupe, that is eggplant. Eggplant takes a while to come up, and there's one in each one of the squares. I think I showed you that when I planted them, because eggplant has a big bush on it, so it needs lots of room. Our celery is coming on, looking good. 
Got some more sunflowers there. The sunflowers popped in, popped up really quick. I planted another one of those tomatoes that I uh, pulled out, stuck it right here in the middle. Here's our Chinese noodle beans. I got them on both sides of the uh, arbor. Every one of those come up too, by the way. So Chinese noodle beans grow well. And I'm looking forward to seeing these cover this, cover this arbor this year. Got some more sunflowers. So we put sunflowers in every box just to uh, give this a little bit of color. But look at this bean box, right? This is our black beans. You can see all the way to where it stops. And where it stops, if you look down there, and I'll bring you down there in a minute, there's some watermelons coming up. Over here, this is all sunflowers, all the way down this side, all the way to right here, sunflowers. And then here, watermelon, 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 watermelon. I love watermelon. And that's one thing we haven't had a hard time growing on the homestead is watermelons. Except for last year. And I'll put our video up of last year's watermelon garden so you can see the debacle we had. All right, here's my other tomato garden, one of, the, one of many. You can see there, they're growing up nicely. They're getting some nice, big, thick vines on them. And they're coming up really nice. Really nice. Look at these tall guys over here. They're stretching up big time. Coming along, and Holly's wanting to say hello to y'all. She's barking back there. Now also, if you notice, there's a groove in the ground here. I planted carrots all the way down on both sides of this bed. So, like I told you, carrots love tomatoes, and tomatoes love carrots, so we're going to put ca carrots in each one of these boxes. And I pulled two of our carrots our, that we had over the winter today, and I'll show you those in just a minute. All right, over here, this is our uh, purple hole beans. All right, so I've got a five square planted in here. There are some uh, sunflowers in here as well, but it doesn't look like they germinated. So it's the only box that the sunflowers didn't germinate in, but all of our beans are coming in really awesome. All right, down this side, my peppers, they're starting to get some height on them. This is a problem with peppers sometimes. You've got to watch out for this. This is called leaf curl. This has two different uh, meanings. One of them is either it's getting not enough water or it's not enough nutrients. So I'm going to have to put some jobs around this guy and see. I think it's the, probably the nutrients because we've had some rain so it shouldn't have a problem with water. But that one's doing it too. That one's starting to get some yellowing. This one's starting to get some yellowing. So this whole side now I don't know. I think it's probably Every one of them are starting to turn a little bit yellow. It may be watering. I may need to put some water on these guys because these are the jalapenos and the and the uh, not jalapenos and the anchos that I planted last week, and they're all looking good. The rest of them have been in the ground for a while. I might have to put some fertilizer on them guys tomorrow when I get doing my prune my tomato pruning. So that's probably what their problem is. Let's go over here and show you our cucumbers coming up. Oh. Beth put this, uh, we had a tomato that had just popped up in the ground here, so Beth put a cage around it. So we're just uh, kind of letting things grow where they are until it becomes a problem, and then we'll chop them down. But look at these cucumbers. I mean, they are just growing like crazy, which that's what cucumbers do. And then I've got my other San Marzanos in here. They're getting nice and tall. They're actually growing better over here than they are over in the box with the cantaloupes. Which is not surprising because cucumbers also are uh, good for tomato growth. Now this one right here by the fence, that is a volunteer. This is a volunteer. That's a volunteer. That's a volunteer pepper. Those two. So we've got volunteers everywhere. There's our rogue seed that got dropped in the corner there. But these things are looking really good. 
So all the tomatoes, except for those three in the back, are all volunteer tomatoes. And we're just kind of letting them go right now to see how see what happens. Over here, we're not having quite as good success with the with the cucumbers sprouting over here. But the radishes did take off. And they're looking good. Now down here, I had some more radish seed put, and they haven't germinated yet. So that should be probably on the next garden walk, we should have those radishes coming up. Here's our lettuce and our spinach. This is all spinach all the way down. We've got our onions here. And they are, they've grown a lot in just the last couple of days. We had a little bit of rain, and it really spruced these guys up. All right, over here, here's our beets. So this is our beet bed and it is looking really good and I'm looking forward to canning some beets this year. So what we're going to do with this bed is we're going to, once we pull these beets out, we're going to replant beets. Because you can plant them all the way up to the third week before the first frost. And so we're just going to keep replanting beets until we get enough beets that we have canned and we do eat a lot of beets. Let me show you the little herb garden here. Everything is still looking good. The parsley is rocking on. This guy here, this is Marjam. And it smells awesome. Cilantro there. So pretty much this has got cilantro, parsley, and Marjam in it. And it's uh, it's coming along really well. There's some, uh, some zinnias. And she has planted a lot of stuff in pots. She replanted a lot of stuff, so that's why those pots are missing on the side there. We still got some more herbs coming over here. And some more herbs in here. And here's that rogue plant that I told you I was going to let you know what it is. It's stevia. So apparently we got our sticks mixed up when we put them in the dirt. And we thought this was St. John's wort, but... It's a stevia, so this is what stevia looks like when it comes up, and it does actually make different colored flowers, we found out. I was kind of surprised that with that, and we're not sure how to, this is the first time we've grown stevia, so I'm not sure what we're supposed to harvest, so i got to do some research on that. Do we start harvest the leaves? Is it the flowers? I don't know. So once I figure that out, I'm going to let you guys know, so if you grow stevia, you'll know what to do with it as well. Marigolds are coming in. My pawpaw plants are looking like they probably need to maybe get repotted. I'm surprised these haven't grown anymore because I thought these were like super fast growers, but I'm not sure what's going on with these. They're kind of being a little bit sluggish. We've got more stuff here. All right, these are all tomatoes. These are all some volunteers that she pulled out and repopulated. These actually grew up in that uh, little box on the side of the, the greenhouse there. So she populated. Pop Put them in that pot there. And we'll see what's going to happen with that. We'll probably have to move them somewhere else once they start getting going. My persimmons are looking good. Probably got to find a place for them. Some more marigolds there. All right. This is one of our new entries to the homestead. This is a dwarf magnolia. And I put it in the ground the other day. And within a couple, a couple hours, our big ducks walked by and broke one of the limbs off. So... I'm looking forward to seeing that thing and smelling some of those beautiful magnolia flowers. I love magnolias. Of course, I'm from Louisiana, so I better love magnolias because that's our state flower. We've got some peppers in here, some peppers over there. These are all sweet peppers. So that's what we're growing in these buckets. And our onions are still poking around. They have not sprouted yet, so I'm not sure what's going on with the onions. They're usually pretty quick. Now let me take you over here to the potatoes and I will be shooting another video, part two, on growing potatoes in buckets tomorrow. You should see how much in just a week these things have grown up. I mean, they're coming along awesome. So look, look for that video coming up. I'll probably be posting it on Sunday of part two on growing tomatoes in, in buckets, or potatoes in buckets, tomatoes. Gee whiz. All right. And I finally had something come up in this one. Little bitty guy right there. So this guy's being a little bit slow. Here's our uh, Blue Lake pole beans. 
Every one of those came up too. We got some lettuce over there that we harvested for a salad. It is delicious. It's a little bit tart. That uh, Paris uh, romaine that we grew, um, as it, being young, it's a little bit tart versus some of the other lettuces that you harvest. Got mint over here. Beth put in our um, our squash. They're uh, called early white uh, scallop cr uh, squash. So she put them in here. And I'm going to put up a little trellis for them to climb up. And then we've got some uh, zinnias parked in each one of the corners here. Now let me give an update on the bees. These bees that I put in here, I had actually showed you, I did a swarm video. I put it on Facebook the other day. I forgot to put it on YouTube, but I did a swarm video and I had the this one over here. This didn't have any, this big hive didn't have any bees in it. That hive over there swarmed, went into my crepe myrtle. So I took a bucket, I shook the bees into it, went and dumped them into this hive here and came out the next day, this hive here, and went out the next day to go check on them and all the bees had left and went back into the main hive. The very next day, they swarmed again on the same limb. On, so I took some loppers, I cut the limb off, I brought the limb over here and I put it inside of the hive and I cut the limb small enough where it would fit down between where I'd left the gap in, the, in there and just left it there for two or three days and I put some uh, sugar water in there and they have set up residence. So now I have a colony of bees in this hive. All right, now back over to this guy. The very next day, they swarmed again onto the other limb that I had not, that, on that same crepe myrtle right there. So that's my bee swarm catcher right there. So <clears throat> while they were swarming, I decided I need to go see what's going on with this box here. So I opened it up, I took everything out, and when I opened up the bottom box, there was absolutely no brood in there at all. I mean, zero. In the middle box, however, it was full of brood and honey and pollen. So I took that box and moved it down to the bottom. I put the no brood box on top of that, and then I went and got my other deep super with my plastic frames in there, and I left a... I took three frames out and I did the same thing. I cut a limb, took it over here and set it inside the hive and closed the lid. Came back to check on it this morning. All the bees have gone down into the hive and everybody's happy. So apparently it was just a matter of they didn't like having no brood in the bottom and it all be in the middle. So once I fixed that, that seemed to have satisfied the issue. Hopefully. I haven't seen them swarm since. So Hopefully that fixed that problem. But now I have a bigger problem of now I've got a nook coming next month and I am out of room. So I might have to build another hive. So I'll probably be building another one of these horizontal hives and I'll show you how to do that. Um, it's fairly easy, but and it, ma it makes a whole lot easier trying to transition and inspect, ins inspect your hive. All right, now about this little box here. All right, that guy was on top of where the other deep super is there. It had frames in it, but no foundation. So the bees, doing what bees do, they decided that they're going to make their comb in the direction they wanted. So they, instead of going long ways down each one of the frames, they went this way, across the frames, and made this weird-looking comb. So I, when I did the... For the brood and i put that box there i just i made another bottom for this and i just set it there to see if the bees would actually come out of there and go back in their original hive four days later the bees that are on that comb are still on that comb so now i've got a quasi hive with no queen i've got a queen hive here a queen hive there and i'm not sure what's going to come about these bees here they're probably all just going to die because i'm not feeding them I'm not uh, trying to get them to stay. I actually wanted them to leave so I could use that box as my 
my uh, bee pollen feeder. But just like always, bees do not follow man's schedule. They do what bees are going to do, and they're going to do it whenever they want to do. So that's the thing about bees. And I'll be doing more bee videos coming up in the in the future. In case you're looking for looking into getting into bees, I'll show you some some tips about how to set up your hives and how to harvest honey. Hopefully, I'll get some honey this year. Last year, my bees swarmed twice, but they didn't land anywhere close. They flew way up in the air and took off somewhere else. So I don't know where they went. So I didn't get to harvest those or collect those last year. All right, my peppers are coming up nice in my ground garden over here. Here I've broken up some ground for my okra. I, used, I got my broad fork in the other day, so I've been experimenting with it and really enjoying using it and actually showed my neighbors about it and, and showed all my kids about it. They think it's awesome and everybody wants to buy one now. So hopefully I'll get some, uh, <clears throat> I'll talk to Treadlight and see if I can get some uh, a coupon code to help with people buying those. All right, along this line right here, this was something that was unexpected. All right, so you saw my video when I put in the electrical into my shop and I cut the fiber optic line in half. Well, I was broad forking and lo and behold, I pulled up the fiber optic cable again. Well, I didn't cut it this time, thank God. So along this black line right here or this mound is where my fiber optic cable runs I moved it over to the side as much as I could to get it out of the middle of the garden and then I planted corn down this row and covered it with a potting soil to give it a little bit of fertilizer and I ran this string here to let us know to not dig any side on this side of the string we can go that side but not this side because I don't want to take a chance of losing my internet again. <clears throat> my beans, my Blue Lake bush beans have all come up. They're looking awesome. Everybody's looking swimmingly, except for that one squash right there. I don't know if you can see it right there. It's looking a little dinky. And I may have to end up plopping that guy out of there because he's just not doing, he's looking kind of bad. He, actually, this one over here is not looking too good either. But all the rest of them are doing well, and look how much this catnip has grown. I mean, it is insane how fast this stuff grows. And this stuff is the magic key to keeping the squash bugs away. They can't stand the smell of that catnip. It smells like a, a sweet mint. Mint. Actually, some people call it cat mint because of the minty smell. But I can't attest that my cats do love it. When they come over here, they rub their face in it, and then they, they go nuts. So it's kind of funny watching that. All right, keeping on down, I'll show you uh, the new stuff I've put in. All right, so since, you, since I was last on, I have bought some more trees. So now I've got some trees planted in the front yard. So let me take you down what I've got planted here. All right, so this guy is, and i got to look at the tags here because I can't remember what was what this is a yellow delicious apple down here is a peach and this is a oh excuse me it's a Fuji apple Fuji apple a peach is here this is a Crest Haven peach and then I've got a Granny Smith apple there and then in the middle here I've got a AU Rosen Rosa plum and one thing my neighbor came over here and she's like Man, you've got a peach and a plum planted in the same thing. So when they did this, they somehow grafted right here a plum and a peach together. Or a plum and a peach together. So I've got a plum tree and a peach tree growing on the same vine. So that's going to be interesting to see what kind of fruit that makes. So I don't know if that was on purpose or accidental, but I did some research on the AU Rosa plum. And apparently this is a developed at Auburn University, hence the AU, and they have developed this particular plum to be a very rich plump plum that has very good sweetness and not the skin is really not as tart as most plums are. So 
a little bit about that. My pears are looking ridiculous. Look at this. Look at all the growth on here. You know, I got pears. I got pears of plenty. My tree is bending over sideways because of the, all the pears on here. The other one too. See how it's bending over. It's ridiculous. But that's what pears do when they're starting to grow up. And I'm loving it, seeing the growth in just one year since planting these. I planted these in the fall. When is the fall? Oh, last spring. Last spring, that's right. Last spring and then the next spring to have this much production on it. It's just phenomenal, you know, phenomenal. All right, now let me show you what I did in the front yard because this is, this was something I had been looking at trying to get better. So I've put in another azalea. I've got a, another azalea. And I've got another azalea, another azalea, another azalea, another azalea. And these are rhododendrons. This one is lavender, and then I got another rhododendron I'm going to put in right there that is red. So these are going to beautify the front. I needed to get some color in here because the blueberries just, you can't see anything after the little white flowers make their berries. They just don't make anything anymore. But look at all the production these guys have got. I got blueberries on all of these guys. So we're going to be getting some blueberries very soon you know these are starting to get into that blue stage getting out of the green back in into the purple stage this guy back here had to, it I thought it was dead last year it had almost died back so it grew some new stuff this year so this isn't this one's a little bit late to the party on making big berries and then I had a big limb that came up out of this one we had to cut off because it had died back so this one has got and then I've got this one, and then one more here. And then my neighbor went and bought seven more today. So she's got, she's got a, I thought I had a lot of blueberries. She's got a big old blueberry thing over there, and she doesn't even like blueberries. So that's kind of funny that. And then here is Beth's Mother Day, Mother's Day's gift from her at my neighbor's yard over here. You know, she grows a beautiful front yard. But she bought this for Beth today. This is a, another plum. It's called a purple plum. And the leaves on it are actually reddish purple. So that's going to be awesome to see this guy. I'm going to put this in the ground tomorrow. I just Basically, I was out of gas planting these trees yesterday, or day before yesterday. And yesterday was our anniversary. So I took the day off and enjoyed spending time with my wife. And we had a wonderful time just hanging together. Even though the weather was a little bit yucky, it was still wonderful to be able to hang out with my wife and enjoy our ninth year. I can't believe it's been nine years already. It's just amazing. And she is an amazing woman, let me tell you. All right, this is that bed that she planted. So this has got those white flowers. And I still have not found the packet that, for the name of these guys. But this also has buckwheat planted in it as well. And I don't know, first time we've grown buckwheat, so I don't know what it's supposed to look like when it comes up. There's a lot of things coming up that look like grass to me, but I don't want to go crazy pulling stuff out of here and end up pulling up my buckwheat. So I'm going to have to let this thing run run wild a little bit. for. But I'll get in here and get after this grass here in the next week or so. Hopefully it'll start showing some production. And then here's our strawberries. Look at all these blooms. Ooh, got some got a berry right there got another one right there got to get to those before the slugs do because the slugs will eat up they'll bore into the strawberry and they'll eat half of it and then you go to pluck it and you got nothing but a big goo look at all these blooms though this is amazing 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 and look at my blackberries look at that growth now these things these things are crazy. All right, this started with just a little vine back there in the back. I, actually, there were two little vines in the back. And it grew up and went over here. It went down in the ground, popped back up, went back over here, went down in the ground again. Over there, one of them, that other one over there grew underneath the deck and came back out. 
ran along the ground. And now, right here in the front, one, two, three new blackberry vines have come up right by my strawberries. And just happenstance that strawberries and blackberries like each other. So these are going to help each other grow as well. And we're going to be actually putting in more strawberries. It's going to be another one of our bumper crops we plant is strawberries because I eat a ton of strawberries. I'd probably say in a during the strawberry season, I probably eat, I'm going to just say conservatively, 40 pounds of strawberries. I just love strawberries. I put them on everything. I put them in my cereal. I put them in my milk. I cut them up and with some bananas and have that as a dessert at night. You know, they just go good with everything. So strawberries are one of my, they're, they're my nemesis. So if you want me to do something, you could bribe me with strawberries. <laughs> All right. And last but not least, here's our, our place. This was our volunteer garden, remember? Now it's got our lettuce coming in, and this is all, this is all um, iceberg lettuce. All coming up nice. We've got our tomato. I've got another volunteer tomato, another one here, another one there, another one there. So I'm going to end up making a little trellis right here in the front. And then opening this back side up so you can get in and out of this lettuce bed without having to tear up the tomatoes here. But look back here where that tomato that we threw out during the winter, look what it did. I mean, it's, every seed looks like that was in that thing has sprouted. Now that's probably going to end up getting whacked out because we just don't have a no place for that. But this is a testament to what Beth was talking about. Of You can take a ripe an overripe tomato throw it in a bucket and it will grow tomatoes it'll grow more tomatoes than you know what to do with so it does work and it is a it's you know there's proof in the proof in the pudding right there this is not even it wasn't even in a in a box it was just thrown on the ground that's just regular ground there was no the box stopped where this little thing i put in here was so this is outside the box Huh. Tomatoes outside the box. It's pretty, pretty smart. All right. So that's our garden walk. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me uh, buzz you over here and give you a quick look at our baby goat because a lot of people have been asking about Fiona. So let me come over here and turn the light on because it's gotten dark in the barn. There we go. And there's Fiona. Yeah, there's my baby. She's growing up, getting a big girl. And this is Mama. And we did milk her one time, and it was a, uh, I mean, we got some milk, but it was a it was a learning experience. I didn't put it on YouTube because it was the first time we ever did it, and we didn't do everything correctly, and it was just a mess because she is a handful of she doesn't want to be outside. She doesn't want to be handled by anybody. So I basically had to drag her over there to the milking stand. And then she stood the whole entire time with her side against the wall over there. And whined continuously while we tried to milk her. But she does need to be milked. I mean, you can look at her bag right there and you can see this side over here is just full. So Fiona's doing a pretty good job emptying the right side but the left side not so much so i need to get we need to get her back on the milk stand again and start getting her used to being milked so i read that about goats that if you don't you if you don't show your authority with a goat the goat's going to have all the authority so you got to show you it's a battle of wills to some degree so you can't let the goat win because if the goat wins then they'll always want to do what they want to do so you got to bend them to your will you know sounds kind of kind of uh mean but we got to do what we got to do and here's our americanas look how big them guys have gotten i mean they are rocking on they're getting up in size i'm you know they're going to be moving over to we're going to be processing the uh fryers here in about two more weeks and then they're going to be moving into that 
but I don't see that they're going to be in there very long. I could, I could see them being in general population with chickens pretty soon because they are getting big. I mean, that, that's, that's some growth on some uh, egg-laying birds. We've got these guys from Tractor Supply, and I don't think I've bought any laying hens from Tractor Supply that grew this fast. This is our first Americanas, and I'm actually going to be putting building them a separate enclosure where we're going to try to uh, hatch our own Americana eggs. Now the one that I was looking for, there's another one in here. Uh, you can see there's only nine. The other one's up underneath the Brincia heater right there. That one's name is Buckbeak. It's got a defective beak. So they're on the bottom of its beak. It's kind of, well, let me see if I can do it with my fingers. It's kind of doing like this where the, the top of the beak and then this one over here kind of points off to the side so they're not underneath each other perfectly. And... I, we, the, I named her Buck Beak because she's got a bucked beak. And the boys loved it. They thought it was funny and awesome. So hopefully she'll live. I know that sometimes, but it, I mean, it hasn't seemed to really it, you know, apprehend her from eating. She still seems to be out here eating all the time and getting water. So I'm not seeing, she's just not growing as fast as the other guys are. So I think that's why she hides underneath the Brinceas, trying to keep away from these other guys. You know, maybe bullying or something. All right, so that's our garden video, our garden walk. So let me flip it around and give y'all a send off. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this garden walk. This is our second one, and we'll be doing one every week, or try to do one every week, but. It's going to be pretty much on Fridays, I'll do a garden walk and put it up so you can see our garden growing. We don't do this frequently. We actually do this for a purpose so we can keep a record of our garden for each year. But when we show this to you, it's because we love you. We love our subscribers and we thank our subscribers for subscribing. And if you have not subscribed yet, Please subscribe and ring that notification bell so you can see when we put up new videos. Give us a thumbs up and share this video. That's the best thing you can possibly do is share these vi this video on the social media. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and whatever type of social me media you use. And we also have a Facebook page for Heavenly Harvest Homestead. So go on there and follow us as well because sometimes we put stuff up there that doesn't make it into YouTube. But until next time, remember, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. God bless. Love you.